Okay, we'd like to welcome Scotty Scheffler into the interview room. He's making his fifth career start at the Travelers Championship. Scotty, you've improved each of your four years here. It's been his fourth last year. If you can talk about being back here at uh, TPC River Highlands. Um, yeah, it's good to be back. I feel like this is always a fun tournament to come play. The community really kind of rallies around the tournament. Um, the fans are always tremendous. The golf course is typically always in great shape. The uh, you know, the clubhouse, the way the tournament treats us as players is always tremendous, and so it's it's a very easy, fun week for us to come play, and I'm glad to be back here. Last signature event, event of the year, you've won three so far this year, five overall tournaments. Just um, recap the season for us, if you can. Um, yeah, so far it's been it's been nice to get some results, get some wins out of playing some good golf, and you know, I'm hoping that will continue as the year goes on. And... Uh, yeah, it's been it's been a good year. All right, we'll open it up to uh, questions. Yeah, we'll start with Paul over on the left. Scotty, how would you kind of characterize last week at Pinehurst now that you've had some time to think about how it went? Uh, long. Yeah, pretty much. Just uh, yeah, long week. I'd say it's a tough week. I, I didn't have my best stuff, and that's a pretty difficult golf course to try and you know, make uh, a lot of birdies and play some good golf around when you don't have your best stuff. And, yeah, that's how, I think that's how I'd characterize it. Just wondering one more on that, just the wire grass and kind of the vari variability that it um, can kind of create off the tee, whether you could be kind of totally forced to pitch out or you could have a perfect lie. Does that mess with you on the tee at all, knowing it could be great, it could be terrible when you hit it in there? I would say for sure that's a pretty good observation. Um, when I'm not playing my best, I feel like one of my skills is kind of managing my way around the golf course, knowing where the misses are. And when you have pretty much a coin flip on whether or not you're going to have a swing or not, there's not really a side of the fairway to miss it on. There's not really areas you can play to. You just have to hit great golf shots. So when you're not hitting it great, you know, I feel like that's why I'm usually able to compete when I don't have my best stuff is the way I kind of manage my way around the golf course. And last week, you're just not able to do that just with the nature of the grass because you could hit it a foot off the fairway and be in a bush, and you could hit it 20 yards off the fairway and have a perfect lie that you're – and it plays like you're in the fairway. So that part of the course I didn't love. But tee to green, um, you know, fairway – sorry, I should say fairway to greens. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was a great, a great test of golf. Um, challenged us in all the right ways. You know, you had to hit great shots in order to hold the greens. Um, around the greens, you always had some sort of shot because you're playing out of short grass. So I think sometimes when the rough is really heavy, you just see guys playing the same shot over and over again. And a ball that runs through the green goes the same distance over the green as a ball that barely trickles. And when it's all runoff areas um, that are tightly mown, you know, you pay a bigger penalty for a bigger miss, which I think as players, that's, that's all we're looking for is um, – to have good shots rewarded and have bad shots punished accordingly to, you know, how bad they are. All right, let's go to Dave, far left. Yeah, Scotty, you've played in a couple of events now in a row and you're coming, coming here. Is it with the heat and the sort of hot weather that we're expecting to get, is it more challenging for you to play when you're maybe physically fatigued or mentally fatigued? Uh, I think mentally fatigued. You know, I think with, with golf, the physical aspect of it, um, you can really train for. I uh, the, the mental part is, I would say, more difficult to train for. Um, as far as the heat goes, you know, I'm from Texas, so it's actually cold up here to me. You know, it, was a little, it was a little chilly this morning when I got out there on the course. But, um, yeah, I think mentally I would say it's, it's always more challenging than it is physically. And one, one last thing, your caddy, Ted Scott, has had a lot of success here and was with Bubba in, in one tournament. Yeah, he, he always reminds me of that. <laughs> to, to that point, um, when, when you come to an, an event where, for example, a player's caddy has had success, how much do you think that yourself or the other players maybe rely a little bit more on their caddy to help them get them over the finish line if they haven't won that particular event themselves? Yeah, I think I, I lean pretty heavily on Ted week to week. And, um, you know, this is a golf course that he's had a lot of success on. And so if there's a difference of opinion, I'm probably going to lean towards him a little bit more than myself just because, you know, I haven't had the success on this golf course specifically. You know, a different tournament – you know, I may lean more to what I feel and think, um, whereas out here, you know, he really had, does, does a good job of managing around this golf course. And, um, you know, I think of another place where Augusta's kind of like that, where, you know, what, whatever he says seems to kind of go for me in my head just because, you know, he's had the success. He has the pedigree. He knows where, where to put the ball and where not to put the ball. And, um, you know, especially when it comes to a lot of the course management stuff, you know, clubs to choose off the tees, what areas to play into. Um, you know, just because, like you said, he's seen Bubba win here numerous times and, he knows exactly 
I think, how to kind of get me there, if that makes sense. All right, Scotty, front row, right over here on the right. All right, Scotty, you started the season strong going 41 uh, straight uh, rounds, par or better, and then obviously uh, five over or uh, five rounds straight over par. Uh, kind of, ha- What's it like for what some people would say to kind of be human now? Um, and then how do you just put that past you and look forward to uh, this week? Um, well, I didn't really think about it very much when I was shooting under par, so I'm probably not going to think about it too much when I'm shooting over par. Um, just one of those deals like I was playing good and I was able to survive kind of the harder golf courses like Bay Hill, you know, is a golf course where you're pretty much going to shoot over par at least one round. And um, I did the streak end at Colonial. Is that right? It was PGA. PGA. Oh yeah. PGA. PGA. Yeah. But then like, it's just kind of one of those weird little stats. Like I think I shot over par a couple times at Colonial and I finished second. So it's not like, you know, I played that bad and shot over par. It's kind of one of those deals that just out of sight, out of mind. All right, let's go to Jimmy and Dom over here. Front. I just wonder if you had any reaction to the live PGA negotiations. They seem to be going slower. Is there any frustration with that? Or? I have no idea. I, uh, I'm not really too much a part of it, and so um, I haven't really heard too much. So I don't know if they're going great or if they're going poorly. So um, your guess is good spot, I think, at this point. But you know, hopefully they'll continue to progress, but we'll see. But definitely no frustration or anything like that for me like I said it's out of my control so I'm not I'm not too worried about it you know they got a lot of big business decisions to make and um as far as my opinion goes I'm, I sit on our our uh, our pack but as far as input in the negotiations I, I don't really have much to say at all so frustration definitely not but you know we'll see how things progress thank you all right let's go to Dom front row left <clears throat> It's kind of haven't been through a, a, now a season of the signature events. I'm just wondering what your take is on the concept, on the schedule, uh, you know, what you like about it, what you may think needs to be tweaked about it. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think pretty loaded. I think I'll have a better idea once I sit down after the year and kind of figure it out. As far as playing in the events, I think it's a great experience for the players. Um, being able to play twosomes for the week is really nice. It's great for pace of play. I know pace of play is a huge I think a huge debate in the golf world, or at least it was before the, you know, the live stuff all happened. I think pace of play was the biggest deal in golf. And so being able to go out and play twosomes and playing a golf course like this, I'm sure we'll definitely be able to get in in under four hours. And as far as playing multiple weeks in a row, having the ability to play twosomes makes it a lot easier to get guys around the golf course, especially if we're going to be asked to play numerous weeks in a row with these events. Um, as far as the actual on-course product goes, I think it's great to have the best players together as often as you can on our tour and um how do you make that happen i think is a is the is the biggest question to ask and how can we make that product the best for the fans and i think as the year goes on into the off season i think we'll have a lot more of those discussions to kind of sit back and look but right now we're still in the midst of it and so you know i've been pretty focused on kind of my on course stuff versus the off course stuff so as far as off season goes it's something that i think a lot of us will address all right let's go back left Jacques, and then paul scotty how you doing man so uh, you mentioned mental toughness earlier, and we know you just had a baby. And for those of us that are dads here in here, we know what a new baby does to you. So I just want to know, how are you doing personally with all of that going on? Yeah, it's been a ton of fun. My, I've, We've been fortunate that you know Bennett's been healthy and Mary's been healthy, so they've been able to travel with me for a bit. And you know he does a decent job at night, but every, every night's a mystery, you know. But it's been a ton of fun. You know, fatherhood's been great. It's It's really special to see you know, him develop basically daily. You know, it's it's so funny how excited you go. I, I actually realized when we were going to dinner last night, we were riding in the car, dinner was about a half hour away, and I swear, every minute I was like, Mary, look at look what he's doing, look at him. And I was like, after about 15 minutes, I was like, all right, you can probably stop telling your wife to later, son. <laughs> like, it's not that big of a deal. But, yeah, it's it's definitely, life's a lot different, but it's different in a great way, and so it's it's been a ton of fun. Okay, then my second question, I'm a sneaker guy. Okay. So how do you choose which pair you wear on the course, or why do, why do you wear the model that you wear? Um, so most of it is based on performance. Um, the shoe, I actually think, is is extremely important in the golf swing, especially for me with how, how much my feet move throughout the swing. And um, it's very important for me to be wearing the same shoe every time because if I change the way the shoe sits at an angle or if I change the height, it can change drastically how the club goes through the ball. And so I wear typically the same pair just for performance reasons. Um, you know, just so I have the same amount of traction, same amount of weight. Like if I wore shoes that were a lot heavier, it'd be much tougher for me to get onto my left side. And 
Um, so most of it's based on just the performance of the shoe, and you know I, I like the way they look as well, but mostly it's based on performance. Do you switch throughout the season, or is it like one pair the entire season? I typically will wear, like, do I change like for a fresh pair? Yeah, so I'll typically get a fresh pair every other week about um, just to you know make sure everything stays super consistent with the shoe. Um, as far as breaking them in, that's not really a huge deal for me. They're usually pretty comfortable to start, and it's nice to have – you know, a nice new pair of shoes that look good because, you know, when I was a kid, I would wear shoes for years and they probably wouldn't be the uh, best product for Nike on TV, you know, if I, because I play a lot of golf. <laughs> and so as far as wearing a fresh pair, you know, just so the performance stays the exact same, um, kind of like I would with a fresh wedge. You know, most people don't change golf clubs for years, but we change, you know, lob wedges probably once a month. Um, so a lot of that's just based on performance. All right, let's take a few more. Let's go Paul in the middle. Scotty. Last winter, you talked a lot about the stuff that you and Phil Kenyon were working on with the putting stroke, feeling more athletic through everything. Now that, I mean, maybe you could say different, maybe now that it's a bit more ingrained in, I still see you working with him, you know, most weeks. What, at this point, are you guys working? Is it continuing those feels, or have you moved on to other things? No, I'd say um, continuing a lot of those feels. I think, th- like, the process is always ongoing, and so we're always trying to get a little bit better, and I feel like, with the stuff we're working on, there's always room for improvement. Um, and most of it is just working on getting the right picture in my head and being as athletic as possible. So I'd say we're continuing to, to fine-tune and find better ways to work on what we originally worked on, if that makes sense. All right, right side over here. Second hey, row. Scotty. Um, you arrive in New England right after the Celtics beat the Mavs. Um, are you... answer this question? <laughs> Let's see what it is first. Yeah, <laughs> Um, that might give me my answer right there. <laughs> but um, are you expecting to hear any uh, trash talk, I guess, from fans uh, or from other golfers or, you know, Keegan? Probably Edgar? not from other golfers. Um, maybe Keegan, but probably not. I wouldn't have really expect that of him. I did get one fan today to ask me to sign a Celtics hat, and I told him no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but other than that, not much interaction. <laughs> Thank you. All right, left over here, Dave. You're going to be returning over with a bunch of the American players now as a member of the Olympic team. Would you anticipate that when you get to Paris, you'll be working as a team, or will it be sort of like a week-to-week PJ Tour event where maybe what's best for Scotty Scheffler and you playing your best isn't necessarily sharing notes, comparing things, working with Colin and Wyndham and such like that, getting through there? How much, how much will you work as a team as the United States, and how much will you work as Scotty Scheffler trying to win a medal? Yeah, I think with the format of it, it's more of an individual tournament, you know, because there's no real team aspect. But as far as going over there and playing, I, I would approach it the same way I would a tournament here. And, you know, I'll probably play a practice round with the guys and just because we're friends, you know, not for any other reason. And usually we're always kind of sharing notes on the golf course and stuff like that. When you play practice round together, you just discuss things just by nature of being out there together. And so I, I would assume it's going to be a lot of that just, you know, the field will be a bit different, and so I'm not necessarily going to go out and try to play too many practice rounds with somebody from a different country. And so I'm probably, you know, from that aspect, you know, we're trying to go over there and earn a medal for the USA. And so it'll probably be a closer knit circle as we go over there, I would assume. But like I said, I've never played, so I don't really know what the, the vibes are like over there. And um, to be honest, I hadn't really thought about it until you asked that question. Um, so those are, my, those are my first thoughts. What, what other Olympic events might you be most excited to see in person? You know, I, I always loved basketball. I grew up playing basketball. I'd like to see that. Um, tennis has always really interested me. Um, I think going down to the Olympic Village at least once is something that I'm definitely going to want to do just to watch, you know, the athletes train. You know, I think I'm, I'm fascinated by a lot of the other sports. You know, I grew up playing a ton of sports, and so to be able to, to see the best in the, in the world at their craft would be pretty special. Um, I think my wife really wants to see the gymnastics, so I'll probably go try to see that as well. But... Um, yeah, we'll see what we have time for as the week goes on. All right, last question with Joe. You've accomplished a lot in golf. When you get, as you get closer, what do you think it would be like to play for your country and the, the excitement that will be from that? Yeah, I think playing, playing for your country is always extremely exciting, um, especially I think it will be extra special doing it on the Olympic stage. Um, it's also good bragging rights for people when they tell me golf's not a sport. I could say, you know, it's an Olympic sport. So that's always fun. Um, <laughs> 
But, yeah, representing your country is, is really special, and to do it on the Olympic stage is going to be pretty surreal, I would say. And, you know, like I said, I'm just excited to go there and experience the Olympics, see some other sports, um, go to the village, see the other athletes, and, um, you know, just, just really be a part of it. So it should be, should be a fun, special week. All right. Scotty Sheffler, thank you, sir. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it.